Welcome everyone to the C-Suite Marketing Perspectives Podcast. I'm Steve McDonald, your host. And today we have a, a really, really interesting conversation. It's about content 3.0. And if you don't know what that is, that's great. That's why you're here. We're going to talk about the evolution of content and where it's going. And leading that conversation is Karen Sage. Now, Karen, you're a, a five-time B2B CMO. You're I currently am. the CMO at Shipwell. And kind of one of the badges of honor that you wear is that you're kind of the CMO of, of exits, right? A lot of the companies yeah. that you've been at have had good exits. Tell us just a little bit more about your background and, and ship well, and then we'll kind of get into this idea of the evolution of content and what is content 3.0? Sure. I, I like to give people warnings on my background. Um, the two warnings I give is that, you know, all my education is in math and engineering. Um, which is very unusual for our marketing, although, you know, I guess it's becoming more and more popular, um, as it should, right, given how digitally digitally sort of savvy you have to be. Um, but also, too, that I'm an introvert, which people are, are always uh, surprised at. Um, being an introvert, I, I've known of a couple other CMOs that are introvert, but we're far and few between. Well, you don't sound like an interview or an introvert when I'm talking with you, but <laughs> I, I turn it on, but I tell you, I'm I'm like the best ghoster at parties that's ever ever been known. <laughs> okay. I'll remember that for our company Christmas party this year. Yeah, don't take offense for sure. <laughs> well, let's get into this conversation because there's always an evolution in our jobs and the markets, right? And and content is such an important part of what we do in marketing and you know, not only from product marketing, but all the way through thought leadership and establishing our expertise and that role as a trusted advisor and how that impacts the buyer's journey at every stage. So when we talk about the evolution of content, it's an important subject. Maybe just tell us, give us kind of the content 3.0 101 from Karen in terms of where you think it's going. Sure. So I, th I think content um, we've all realized is hugely important. Um, thought leadership in general is hugely important. I think that there's, there's other sort of things going on in terms of trends um, that is going to make content very hard to reach and sort of, um, sort of differentiate in terms of being sort of, you could even go as far as to say accurate, but trustworthy was probably, probably a better word there. Um, and then the third part of that is, is just, um, you know, how do you discriminate against all the other stuff out there? So the things going on that, you know, one of the, the huge one is chat GPT right. and the fact that you can generate content very, very easily now. Right. And so I think everybody's upping their content game because it's easier and easier to produce. Um, the flip side of that is, is, you know, other things happening in digital marketing, like de deprecation of third party cookies and privacy laws, our ability to, to sort of target and be very specific about um, who we target and, and get that content in their hands is going to be sort of removed from a public sense. And what happens when you get lots and lots of content out there and the inability to target it? Um, you have an explosion of, of content that I think is it needs to basically sort of uh, uh, go through a revolution and change just the way we think about content. And you have a very specific way that you're thinking about that, right? And it's yes. around community. So understand clearly, right? Everybody's got a content team. Everybody's producing content. There was already a ton of it. Harder to personalize now, harder to target, but we're still getting a couple hundred emails a day coming at us. So in that environment where we've got to make a pivot in all throughout our careers, right? Like digital marketers, right? That was a pivot we all made in our careers. If there's a pivot to be made here, you talked about content and community as a pivot point. Right. What do you mean by that? I would go as far to say as, as you know, content 3.0 is basically its community. Um, and, and content is a way to basically establish and set up and provide a platform for community. Um, I think that, that you know, when you, when you talk about community, let's talk about what that means a little bit. 
It's about sort of building authentic relationships and having discussions on very authentic and trustworthy sources um, and ability to, to uh, have that engagement in a way that you feel comfortable with. I'd go as far to say safe. Yeah, and, and it's all about relationships. We know that the ABN world is driven by relationships. And so that makes good sense just from the, from the starting point. You know, where we are right now, we have content that is produced by the company, right? We have one sheets, we have all kinds of product marketing, we have case studies with all kinds of things that are created by us, right? And they come from our point of view and they come from us as the seller. Like we ultimately, we, we're the ones selling our products, right? So we've tried to do things like create thought leadership which brings in outside perspectives, right? So we'll bring in, you know, industry luminaries, analysts, we'll bring in our customers, we'll bring in prospects, we'll bring in all these different point of views. But what I liked about our conversation was there's no point of view that, that makes better sense than the point of view of the community of the ICP that you're reaching out to, mm -hmm. right? So that is the same people that are struggling with the same things that you are. They're trying to understand the trends, trying to understand mm -hmm. how to be, you know, innovative in their approaches and solving problems and mitigating risk. And, and, and that's the education process of thought leadership, right? For sure. But it's hard to do. So I like the idea of putting some of that weight onto the community where you bring it into the community of your ICP by drawing in those outside perspectives. But you talk about the concept of safe, a community that's safe to share. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you even gave me an example of like when you're, when you're mentoring somebody, tell me a little bit about that and kind of illustrate this idea of content inside of community that's safe. Sure. You know, where it came from is I think when you have a community or you have like sort of a, a podcast or any kind of conference, um, obviously you have to sort of filter what you say. I think it's, it's, you know, what we call safe. I mean, you just can't sort of say it the way it is. I mean, people can interpret things in different ways. If you, if you sort of take that to another level, if you're having, for example, a mentoring relationship, you can sort of expose yourself and, and be sort of telling the truth in ways that you may not be able to publicly. And we, we sort of had an example of, um, you know, a situation where you brought up like marketing. It, it's a very challenging role. If I were put it out there and I'd say, Marketing is the best thing, and I, I truly believe, but there's some challenges. You know, one is short tenure. One is sort of the relationships that you have with sales and some of the other, you know, people who, who sort of have a frictionful relationship with, uh, uh, with marketing. And if I were in a, a kind of a conference situation, I would talk about that entirely differently than in a mentoring conversation. And, and say, look, the reality is this, and here's how you're going to have to handle this. It, 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 that sort of disparity between kind of a representations of what's the actual truth sort of talks about like this whole idea of that community wall and if you're in it or versus out of it. So one example I gave you is, is um, when we talked about sort of CMO club, um, one of the reasons why it was uh, kind of even established, it's called Club CMO now, was that that all these vendors would come up with conferences and things like that. The CMOs were coming, and there was no way to have kind of a peer-to-peer -peer honest conversation. And so what this organization tried to do um, was really sort of establish a safe place. Interestingly enough, sort of fast forward, there's several different uh, organizations I belong to having these peer-to-peer -peer discussions. Some of them are actually run by vendors and they say no recording, you know, like cameras off, you know, like uh, they're, they're very, um, they, they understand the distinction between this, this sort of, um, you know, lack of community sort of open to everyone versus open to a safe peer set. 
here, very important part of that save. You know, it's the kind of thing like I, one of the things that I was thinking about when you were talking there is, you know, you've seen those placards and different things like nobody's life is like what it really is on Facebook. You know, we'll put up what we want for public consumption. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That right. would show pictures of the food. And even if the p food really sucked, it looked good, right? It looked good. And look, and I was out to dinner and I was actually enjoying a meal with my husband, right? I am so <laughs> wild and crazy. I'm out Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that makes perfect sense, right? And, but now, so this, this evolution, I love it, like from product marketing to kind of thought leadership to, you know, Thought leadership from the community, you know, validating your point of view to now thought leadership inside of a community. But you talked about a distinction about like what, like what a Gartner does, like these analyst mm -hmm. firms, right? And everything. And, and they have a lot of, you know, content that's behind the community, right? But how is this different or the same than what like a, a Gartner is doing? So like, you know, with Gardner, you would have a discussion, um, you know, and, and there's lots of content that, that, you know, is it's walled, but yet it's still sort of public. And then, you know, but what's interesting about that content, like if you do an engagement with Gardner, the next step of sort of that engagement of like reading the content is you meet with the analysts. And that's where the community kind of comes in and the brilliance of sort of that model is that it's a different level discussion. So in, in that scenario, the, the research report was almost a teaser for, for sort of the actually real engagement and, and very satisfying discussion that you would have one-to-one -one, um, with that, that analyst. And so again, it's, it's almost like, you know, Gartner as a community, but Gartner as a community of, of higher and higher value, the more you invest in it has, a, you know, that the content is one thing, but it's really way in the door. It's really sort of that, that second level and sort of enrichment that goes on that, that you provide, that, that provides you the most benefit. Right. That's, that's their business model, right? Is that I create enough valuable content that I put out for public consumption that you're going to say, Hey, these guys are really important. You know what they're talking about. You know yeah. they're talking about they are thought leaders and I want more and I'm willing to pay for it. But what you're talking about is a B2B thought leadership strategy that promotes content that isn't to paid communities, right? For the most part, there's always money involved, right? I mean, you know, even CMO club, there's membership dues. I mean, part of the reason why they're, they can, you know, take, uh, uh, sorry, or not take a vendor's funding you know, who wants to sponsor all the CMOs to dinner is that that if you pay to belong to the community, you you actually pay for your own dinner. So so there there you know there's always money involved somewhere, right? But the, the the point of it is to get people into a community where authentic conversation can happen. That's conversation right. that doesn't happen on Facebook. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and if it does, it's filtered, right? It, it's it's a taster. It's 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 a it's a indication of the value uh, of the conversation that you're having without necessarily that flavor that that shouldn't be shared. So you said something that might be a little controversial, which I love, and that is that all of a sudden my heart earned. Thought leadership content is the teaser, right? It's the taster. It's but the taster. Thought on, I work hard on my white papers. I work really hard to get those webinars together, right? Yeah. But tell me a little bit about your thinking there because there's still value in all that. Like, like there's value in all the public thought leadership that Gartner puts out or Forrester puts out, right? That's And, and they oh, totally. totally keep doing that. You don't want to ever stop doing that. I you're feel like those are training. Words. Those are training wheels, you know, that that content is, is what, you know, it, it's sort of an indicator of the value of further engagement and the, the further engagement is community. And so what content has done for you there is basically enabled that community. Now, does it also, is it music kind of to the ears of, of other CMOs that are here listening? Because one of the things that's beautiful about a community, I used to have for one of my businesses, a Facebook group that was just on fire. 
And I remember thinking to myself, this is the very first time that I'm adding value to my community without actually having to do a ton of the work, right? Mm -hmm. There was such value being exchanged within that community in the name of my company. I just remember thinking to myself, wow, I work really hard on that teaser stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah. That it actually, because we, we struggle quite a bit. Thought leadership is not easy to create, right? It's no. one of the hardest things that we do. So actually having content evolve in a certain way to a, into a community where the community is a part of that shared value is it's kind of a breath of fresh air in a lot of ways, right? Yes. I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's focused, it's um, authentic, it's got a position, it's got value that, that you can take away, but yet, you know, part of it is on that, you know, not physical, but you know what I mean, that, that content piece of it. But then part of it is in that intellectual sort of mind merge you had that, that carries on above the content and beyond, right? Right. And you get to be you get to be an orchestrator inside of that community, right? That's right. And 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 the value that you've provided is sort of that takeaway, but even more valuable is the fact that you set up that conversation and that that get together or that that mind merge. Right. Right. Now, okay. So what what everybody's thinking at this point is makes perfect sense. Where do I start? Right. How do I how do I think about this in and I know you're in your beginning stages of starting and thinking and implementing this as well. So what's your advice? How do, like, how do you take baby steps into this? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. And it's one that I faced here. And, and part of it was just, you know, there's so much content out there. Part of it was like, how do, how do I differentiate, you know, and get, well, one, figure out how to get to people, how to make that connection. But two, to make it in a place that uh, has value just in the fact that you've defined that place. Right. And so, you know, we've done things like, uh, uh, for example, we've looked at, at uh, customer advisory boards as a key sort of value proposition that, you know, we can begin to have discussions and leverage those in ways that go far beyond what is ever produced from the, that relationship from a content standpoint. Um, the second piece is, you know, the, the whole, um, if you think about sort of LinkedIn and being able to set up a community within LinkedIn, uh, ha you know, having sort of people identify with that community has been huge in terms of if you give good content, they know where to go. They, they, they know what emails and newsletters to open, and that gives them sort of, um, you know, a, a much more engaged value proposition. And there was another value point that you mentioned earlier before we hit the record button, <laughs> and that is that, you know, as we produce our thought leadership content right now in the content 2.0 world, that what you're talking about provides a platform to stay connected in that relationship. Right. Tell us a little bit more about that. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's, you know, it's again, that concept of a, a community and basically the fact that you have to um, do things to sort of carry that community forward. And it doesn't mean a one-on-one -on -one discussion. So we can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion right now, but then the event is gonna be over. And then six months down the road, if there's no engagement, you know, that that's a tough call, right? What, you know, what, what was the continued value? Right. Now you and I could pick up the phone and have a conversation. Right. Are you going to be able to do that with the hundreds of people that you've, you've interviewed over the, the past few months? Probably oh, not. Oh. But if you were to sort of take and, and aggregate and, and, you sort of uh, reproduce a lot of the, the intelligence that you've learned that's in your head in these mind melds and put it into a, a sort of form that you can share. There's a notion that you've provided continuing value, con continuing community because of that value that sort of keeps the, the light alive for the community in that, that equation, right? 
and it, so it makes important. it makes it so that when you send me an email, hey, I remember Steve. We had that discussion. He always has good stuff. Let me open this. Right, right. It's it's we know this world and this AVM world is all about relationships and keeping those relationships alive. And you work so hard to establish those relationships. We need to work as hard at continuing that relationship. Right? Yes. Yeah, because those are our, we all know what's in the business or personally, our network is one of the greatest value that we have. So it really I is. love that. That, that. That's this community is really what you're talking about, right? You're, you're talking mm -hmm. about creating your own network as a company, right? And in and, and, and fostering that that community and that relation, the relationships within that community. That's right. And it's got, it's got, you know, second order, third order value too. And that, you know, uh, if if you need introductions, you know, outside or or to somebody else in the community, you've you you know it's it, it really is a platform and the 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 notion that you have this activity, but this activity could be so much more the more you push into it, right? Absolutely. So, Karen, there's um, what I want to do is I want to spend a little bit of time and I want to think through a little bit about. For right now, the companies that want to take baby steps, but they know that the thought leadership content that they're creating right now is, is the here and now and today, right? And I'm going to start taking steps towards this building community. Just what are your, your thoughts and, and your recommendations on, you know, thought leadership and how companies should be thinking about creating their thought leadership on this, this never ending need, right? Never, ever goes away. Right. What's your, what are your recommendations or thoughts on that? So first of all, being authentic. I think, you know, if, if you're creating content for content's sake, you missed it. Yep. You know, that, that stuff may have worked, you know, they used to call it clickbait or whatever, you know, it, that used to sort of, um, I wouldn't say it, it ever really provided value, but people felt like it would provide value. So they engaged, right? Right. I think what's, you know, what's more important here is, you know, if, if you're authentic about what you're providing and you take a stand, meaning that, that, you know, you're not everything to everyone, but you have something to say that is, that is sort of unique to you saying it, I think, um, is sort of the second order equation there. I think the third order is, is basically, um, being able to set up ways now to start to establish that community. Where do you start, right? And, you know, I, I think that there's a, been a bunch of communities started, right? And, you know, you could even think, I talked about sort of LinkedIn newsletter, the pot, like your podcast is a community of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's about how, how do you take that engagement to the next level? Um, and I think that's sort of the path to really benefiting from a community. And and you'll know, like a lot of vendors have started their own podcasts. They've started their own sort of communities. I think you're going to see more of that, right? I think so. Absolutely. Well, so this has been such an intriguing conversation. And I I want to have a main takeaway for the audience, right? Some things like if there's anything you remember from what we've just talked about here, what would it be in your mind? Community is the new content. It's like content is old school. You know, it's like it may get you in the door, but you got to do more than that to keep the conversation and the engagement going. Yeah. And when you say going, like continue, go That's on. That's right. To, to a sort of um, continuous value. So you've given me a bunch of ideas. You're like, you're right. My podcast has a community. Darn, I should be making better advantage of it. I might ask you to be my first community member. Oh, yes. good. Yeah. Yes. I like um, it. So if somebody wanted to follow up with you and have a conversation, ask more about this, what would be the best way to get a hold of you? Be in my community. <laughs> Your community. There you go. <laughs> See, and that wasn't, folks, that wasn't a loaded question, by the way. So, so what's funny about that is, you know, I think I have like 15,000 subscribers or, you know, co contacts on LinkedIn now. Um, my LinkedIn, I get 
solicited every day. You know, I decided years ago, do I accept everybody or not? Probably should have said not. I don't know. I, you know, some people think the, the size of their their sort of content, the contact list is sort of um, their value. But I, I think, you know, in terms of me, it's it's really being being thoughtful and and sort of providing value and starting in ways that, um, you know, I even look at how you and I got connected. I mean. You solicited me, I noticed long before I actually picked up the phone, it wasn't until you had reached out and had a friend of mine or, you know, former colleague of mine basically introduce you as part of a trustworthy person that's allowed in my community. That's when I engage. So be a part of my community, you know, and, and I think it's like, you could try LinkedIn. I, I always accept LinkedIn invites, but if if you have that value and you know people in my community that have that, that that know that you have that value they will make that connection for you and that's one that i pay attention to absolutely and and if you watch the podcast i would just say maybe send karen a linkedin connection request with you know content 3.0 at the beginning of the note that would be awesome <laughs> then, then i'll then know, know exactly definitely where it came yeah from. Well, Karen, thank you so much for being on and sharing this. This is a whole new way to think about what we need to be doing. Not like we didn't already have enough, but thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I, I enjoy talking to you. And this is this is a great uh, sort of place for for these discussions.